The Zelda series is known for innovating and creating amazing experiences with every new entry released into the series. Innovations that to this day carry an insane amount of weight in the gaming industry. Each Zelda game strives to do something new with every entry, but one of the most beloved titles in the Zelda franchise just so happens to be one of the most debated and controversial, especially when it first released. I love The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, but it took a long, long time to get there. Although the biggest reason I love the game is because of the dungeons. They have a huge helping hand in why I love this game so much, as I believe they are what make every Zelda game so memorable. And today, we're going to be ranking every dungeon in the game from worst to best. This is continuing my series where I rank the dungeons of the 3D Zelda games, and if you're interested, you can go check out my Ocarina of Time ranking in the description below, or if you're still in the Wind Waker mood, I made a full review on the game and how I eventually learned to love it. So, if you're interested, those videos are available for you to watch down below but without further ado let's get into the ranking coming in dead last we have the forsaken fortress i have seen this dungeon be hotly debated as time goes on whether or not this dungeon is a real dungeon or not some people say it is some people say it isn't but you know what i say it's a strong either or whether you consider the forsaken fortress a dungeon or not this will not change my opinions on it being that the forsaken fortress is very mid 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 Okay, look, the second time you go around the area, it's a lot better as you have all of your items and obtain the skull hammer. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's rewind for a second back to the first encounter with the Forsaken Fortress. You wake up. Next thing you know, your sister gets captured by a giant bird. What do you do? You join a band of pirates, of course. What do they do next? They launch you out of a cannon into the Forsaken Fortress and you lose your only means of defense. Great. The first encounter is purely based on your ability to sneak around the area and take out enemies with sticks or just sneak around the Metal Gear Solid style. I'm gonna be so honest with you, this sucks and I think this shouldn't have been in the game this early. After you leave Outside Island, this is your first real impression of the game and its world, and I think this is what turned me off so much when I first played the game. The beginning of this game in general just isn't my favorite, and it's a long, tedious section of you sneaking around enemies with no defense is just not that enticing to me, especially in a Zelda game. The ending of this section doesn't even have a boss. You get your sword only to immediately be thrown out by Ganondorf and be forced into a section where you can't really use your sword. I was gonna try my best to not compare games that much, but since Wind Waker is a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, I'm just gonna do it anyway. In Ocarina's opening section, you hop in, you get what you need, and you go in and out of your first dungeon in less than an hour, and it's a really good dungeon, no less. You go straight into your adventure, but here in Wind Waker, it's just a lot muddier since you start on outset to go to the Forsaken Fortress and then take your adventure to a screeching halt with Windfall Island, only to after go Windfall Island, you go to Dragon Roost and complete the first real dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> the Forsaken Fortress just isn't fun to me, plain and simple, although the second time you go around is a lot better in my opinion. It's still not great, but a massive improvement knowing that you have your full inventory and a new weapon to brave this area with. But then again, it's over in a flash, but at least there's a real boss at the end of it. The second time around with the Forsaken Fortress is pretty much a dungeon at that point, but it's a lot more combat focused than puzzle focused. However, it will always remain at the bottom of my ranking. Now going into the first real dungeon, we have the Forbidden Woods. Now in Wind Waker specifically, I don't think there's any dungeons that are inherently bad. This game is very consistent with its quality, and I think that holds true even outside of the dungeons, as I did really enjoy the Triforce quest at the end of the game. But because of that consistent factor, it doesn't mean it's the best by any means. Unfortunately, I prefer Ocarina of Time's dungeons over Wind Waker because I think that game has much higher highs than Wind Waker. The Shadow Temple, the Forest Temple, the Spirit Temple are phenomenal dungeons that completely overshadow Wind Waker's dungeons, and that's kind of sad, I won't lie. However, the the good thing about being consistent is that there isn't really any severe lows within the game, which Ocarina of Time definitely has. I don't like the Water Temple or Jabba Jabba's Belly, and those dungeons take place right before some amazing highs in the game, so I definitely see them as pace killers. Wind Waker, however, does not have those lows at all, and the Forbidden Forest gave me that realization. This was the dungeon I always stopped on while trying to get into the game, and after fully playing through it, I totally understand why. It's not a bad dungeon, but it is very consistent. I started and ended the dungeon with the exact same feelings I had. It was just content. I had fun. 
The puzzles were nice, the boomerang was cool and was used in cool ways, but I didn't really gain anything out of the dungeon that I couldn't get anywhere else. I don't really have too much else to say on the dungeon, let's move on. Next up at number 5, I present to you Ganon's Tower. Another relative non-dungeon to me. This one, just like the Forsaken Fortress, prioritizes combat over puzzle solving, but at least there are puzzles present here. The big primary draw of this dungeon are the rooms that recreate the vibes and puzzles of all the dungeons you have previously beaten, and of course, fighting the dungeon boss once again before fighting both Puppa Ganon and, of course, the final fight with Ganondorf. The puzzles in Ganon's Tower are actually quite fun here and use each and every item you've gained throughout your adventure, culminating with fighting the dungeon bosses yet again, which range from the same amount of difficulty to just absolutely pathetic due to their health not being properly scaled with you. The Dragon Roost Island boss being a particular highlight of absolutely pathetic as he tanks about two hits from you and just perishes. He was already painfully easy when you fought him the first time, so he obviously wasn't any harder here, but I do still like the concept of boss rushes. And of course, we can't forget the Ganondorf fight. Absolutely amazing. No issues there. I think it's an amazing finale to the game with the fight and the message it tries to convey. This game gave Ganondorf more of a character than just super evil guy, and I love that about him. He's the exact same dude from Ocarina of Time, so giving him this growth adds onto his character a ton that Twilight Princess failed to capture. Tears of the Kingdom is a different discussion for another day, but yeah, I love Ganondorf. Moving on. At number four, we have Dragon Roost Cavern. This dungeon very much surprised me when going through it when fully playing through the game because for some reason I remembered absolutely nothing about it. I remembered the opening to the game quite well and how I always quit at the Forbidden Woods, but most of Dragon Roost Island was a mystery to me for some reason. I really like this dungeon. It is a first dungeon, so in that context, things are extremely safe and linear, so there wasn't too much challenge for a Zelda buff like myself, but I still had a great time with this one. A fire dungeon wasn't something I was expecting out of a first dungeon in a Zelda game. Normally, it's all about grass in the woods, so aesthetically, this was a fun subversion of expectations. Otherwise, what you actually do in the dungeon isn't too wild. You get the grappling hook in the dungeon, which leads to quite a few platforming puzzles, which I like a lot. It's a nerfed hook shot, and I think it's used very effectively in this dungeon, so that gets a huge plus. Using water bottles to throw into lava to create new platforms, and using fire to create new paths is always fun. Wind Waker, at least in my opinion, is the easiest 3D Zelda game, and this dungeon showcased that in full effect, since this is your first real taste of what the combat is like, and yeah... It's, uh, it, it is easy, which I guess isn't necessarily a bad thing in the sense that Dragon Roost Island is the first real dungeon of the game, so having the developers ease you into the game with some simple combat isn't too bad, but trust me when I say that it doesn't get much harder from here. The only combat challenge I remotely struggled on was the final boss, and even then he wasn't too crazy, but I get it, and it don't even get me started on the boss. I know I brought him up earlier when talking about Ganon's Tower, but it bears repeating because this is new Super Mario Bros. levels of difficulty. You bop him on the head a few times, and you wail on him afterwards, and then boom, he's dead, you win. Other than that, however, this dungeon is a fun introduction to the game, and really sets the expectations moving forward. Entering the top three, we enter the best of the best. These three dungeons are fantastic in my opinion. Each and every one of them are, of course, my favorites in the game, but despite on how consistent Wind Waker is, these dungeons are good. They are so good, they go on to rival some of my other favorite dungeons from other games. They aren't on the level of Spirit Temple by any means, but that doesn't take away from how damn good these dungeons really are. The Earth Temple, the Wind Temple, and the Tower of the Gods are all fantastic dungeons. So of course, before I reveal who the third spot belongs to, make sure to smash that subscribe button and comment down below what your favorite Zelda dungeon is. Okay, now that we got out of the way, let's get on to number three. The third spot goes to the Wind Temple. Now this dungeon is it. In my opinion, this dungeon is quite underrated. When I see conversation around Wind Waker's best dungeons, it's always about the Tower of the Gods and the Earth Temple, which I mean, yeah, they are obviously right, but I think the Wind Temple deserves to be up there with the Earth Temple and the Tower of Gods. I didn't know what to expect when going into this dungeon. It could have been anything, but it ended up shattering my expectations completely. This was the last dungeon I completed before trekking on to find the final Triforce pieces and fight Ganondorf, so this dungeon had to be strong and it came out swinging. 
Controlling Makar was also a very fun mechanic, having him plant trees and using the hookshot to climb onto them. This dungeon has a very open and tall structure. It starts out very linear until you get to this massive open area. You know, you go from room to room, like a regular dungeon of course, but it's due to this massive vertical height, things feel fresh and new, which I love. Sometimes all it takes is changing up how a dungeon is normally presented to make it so much better. It sure helps it stand out from every other dungeon in the game. Game. Finally, getting the hook shot also feels very good to use. You've been stuck with the grappling hook the entire time, so finally being able to use this iconic Zelda item feels sublime. My only real gripe with the dungeon was more of a me thing than anything, and it's that I got it lost midway through the dungeon, and I thought I had completed most of it already, but I still had about half the dungeon to go from there. I was just kind of fumbling around for a long while until I found the way and completed the dungeon. The boss was pretty good too. Overall, this dungeon was very fun and memorable. And now we've reached the final two dungeons, the Tower of the Gods and the Earth Temple. These two dungeons are the peak of the Wind Waker experience and are high A to low S tier dungeons for their puzzle solving and their design. I love both of these dungeons, but only one can come out on top. I did the same trick with my previous ranking. I'm not going to give out the number two in one spot until the end, so keep watching. First, let's start with the Earth Temple. This dungeon setup is awesome. I failed to mention this earlier, but to enter both the Earth and the Wind Temple, you need to complete a bunch of prerequisite tasks to be able to enter the dungeon. For the Earth Temple specifically, you needed the Big Boy Gauntlets. And it was here that I learned a lot more about the lore of Wind Waker and how it ties directly as a sequel to Ocarina of Time. But good lore isn't what makes a good dungeon. How good are the puzzles? They are amazing. This dungeon gives Link the mirror shield. The mirror shield. I have a major bias towards this thing. I absolutely love the puzzles it's utilized in. The Spirit Temple made fantastic use of it, and it's a shame it never got used further since it was introduced so late into the game. And unfortunately, the mirror shield in Wind Waker suffers the same exact fate. But the time they do have with it and the puzzles they do make with it rival and may even surpass the Spirit Temple, all thanks to a certain companion named Medley. I'm not a big fan of constantly using the baton to control her, but it's better than using AI and to be honest, I prefer to be in control and it offers some variety and outside the box thinking when just using Link. She can glide across gaps which offers some great puzzles combined with her acting as a second mirror shield to bounce off of. It feels like a natural evolution of the Spirit Temple's puzzles since you have to do more than just aim light in a certain direction. You have to do that twice and account for where it must go and I absolutely love it. The final major puzzle of the boss being one of my favorites in the entire game. It uses the mirror shield perfectly. The only thing that I would say that holds this dungeon back is the boss fight which I didn't really enjoy all too much. It was very repetitive and it just felt a little anticlimactic to me. Probably because I felt it lasted too long but that's just me. Overall though, the atmosphere, the puzzles, and the difficulty of the dungeon were dang near perfect. And of course, the Tower of the Gods. What to say about this dungeon that hasn't been said already? Then again, everything I'm saying about these dungeons and Wind Waker as a whole has probably already been said. I mean, the game is over 20 years old, so someone had to have said what I'm saying, right? Anyways, this dungeon marks the halfway point in the game. The real grand slam right before you attempt to fight Ganondorf, and it's where you obtain the legendary Master Sword. Instead of being an actual temple in-universe, it's a test of the hero's strength and courage to be able to obtain the Master Sword, and I'm all here for that. You start out in this somewhat open section where you actually get to control the King of Red Lions indoors and travel around as water rises and falls, creating new pads. This is about as close as we'll get to a water dungeon in Wind Waker, and honestly, all the better for it. As a Zelda fan, I'm naturally hydrophobic. It's like I have rabies, I just see water and feel a sense of dread wash over me and get PTSD flashbacks of the water dungeons. And when entering the Tower of Gods, I was really afraid it would be a water dungeon with a lot of puzzles just like an ocarina of time but i am very glad to report that isn't the case here water takes a huge back seat here and only acts for relative cosmetic purposes and again it's all the better for it if you're gonna put a water temple in zelda in my zelda in my zelda make it good all right 
Some puzzles can be kind of easy to figure out, but then again, this is the easiest 3D Zelda, so it's not like I'm expecting an amazing difficulty spike or anything like that, especially halfway through the game. You obtain the bow in this dungeon, and you do your standard bow puzzles, which are always a treat, but the best parts of this dungeon lie within the companion mechanics. This is one of the coolest things to happen in Wind Waker, and I'm glad, I am so glad they further expand upon it later with Makar and Medley, but this is where you get a real feel for the mechanic, and yeah, it's really solid. I did get confused on this one puzzle, but that was because I didn't know you could just pick the little guy up and jump across the gap, but I think these little rock companion missions are executed quite well and are only held back by their lack of abilities. The dungeon also has a fun boss with Nintendo's favorite boss type, that's right, it's the disembodied head and hands fight, and this one was really fun compared to the other bosses in the game, and it was quite unique compared, you know, compared to relative to other hands and and head fights and of course the master sword is always a treat being able to see ocarina of time's hyrule castle with the statue of the hero of time and stained glass paintings of the original sages is freaking awesome and is a moment i will never forget this was back when zelda team actually gave a shit about their stories and they only benefited from doing so bring this back nintendo you cowards both of these dungeons are amazing times and are aspects of the game i look forward to every time on repeat playthroughs but only one of these dungeons can come out on top as the best dungeon in the legend of zelda the wind waker while the earth temple has a worse boss fight than the tower of the gods i still think it is my favorite dungeon in the game simply for the amazing use of the mirrored shield and medley as a partner but that doesn't take away from the quality of the tower of the gods at all I think that section of the game has a far better setup and story surrounding it. I also think the aesthetic of the dungeon of the Tower of the Gods specifically is better, but when it comes to just overall design and fun, I think the Earth Temple comes out on top as the greatest dungeon in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. At the end of the day, The Wind Waker is an amazing Zelda game that I have slept on for the majority of my life and being able to finally beat it was a fantastic treat to see. And I think the game holds more fun than just the dungeons. The entire experience as a whole was fantastic. And I look forward to replaying the game eventually once I complete my... Oh, once I complete my insanely large backlog of games. Call me crazy, but I even really like the Triforce quest, but that's just me. At the end of the day, though, these are just my opinions, and I would really like to know yours. What is your favorite dungeon in Wind Waker or Zelda in general? Let me know down in the comments below. I had a lot of fun making this video, and I plan on doing Twilight Princess and the other 3D Zelda games once I get to them, so if you want to know my thoughts on those dungeons, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll never miss a notification on when I upload. And if you'd like to have a bigger discussion with me, be sure to click the link in the description down below to join my Discord server I created with my friend CK Matt, as we have discussions there all the time, and would love to see you there. But otherwise, I'm all finished for today's video. Once again, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Delonic, and I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy and stay fresh.